Uh, firstly, I would like to say uh, to all and today uh, I'm going to share some important points about the Asianization and uh, uh, in which how India has had an important role to be a leading nation or to be a superpowers. So before I'm going to tell what is Asianization, I'm just going to tell the little bit historical background or historical the evolution of what is Asianization. Uh, so that you will get clear picture or clear concept of what is Asianization. So historically we used to define and uh, they considered that in 19th and 18th century was the European century in which European was the quite powerful in terms of its military uh, capability or its economic strength or its political structures. Uh, so that European has uh, dominated every, uh, almost every part of the world uh, through which it has colonized many parts of the world like Asia and uh, South America and Africa. So this is how European was become a such powerful and uh, monopoly domination across the world in 19th and 18th centuries. Uh, as we all know that European has colonized many parts of the world like the Asia. Uh, for, for instance, India has been colonized by the British for almost 200 years and likewise many Asian countries and African countries has also colonized by many of uh, the different European countries. Uh, but due to certain political turmoil and political differences which has been appearing in the European region in the 19th century and uh, the final of these political differences and political the turmoil has brought these two great war like First World War era and Second World Wars. So within these two great war almost every European powerful country has hugely participated, hugely involved in these two great war so uh, the, uh, even surely the European uh, powerful country has hugely suffered and hugely depressed from these two great wars so uh, European has been started to decline its monopoly domination its superpower in end of the second world wars so uh, the finally the power transformation and uh, the political power of the, uh, the formation has been changed from the European to two superpowers <clears throat> so these two superpowers are now as the uh, USA or Soviet unions. So these two superpowers has been mainly divided on the basis of certain political or economic ideology. So uh, USA has been led by the the political ideologies that are uh, democratic system and economic ideologies, capitalist systems. On the other side, the Soviet Union has been led by the political ideologies, the communists and uh, the economic ideologies, the socialists. So, uh, due to these political and economic uh, the different ideologies, the world has been, uh, even the entire world has been uh, hugely divided because uh, many of uh, the country has been going under the USA led the bloc and uh, many country has been going under the Soviet Union led blocs. So, th th this is how uh, the end of 19th century has been dominated by these two superpowers. Uh, but due to sudden the uh, political the failure or political differences which has been uh, the emerged in Soviet Union system so finally in end of 19th century the Soviet Union has been uh, start to disintegrated and in 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 the finally in 1919 the Soviet Union has been disintegrated and it, it has been collapsed so that's why in end of 19th century or beginning of 20th century uh, they, uh, they has been left only one superpower which is known as the USA. So we used to call that the uh, 20th century is American century, that the in the 19th and 18th century is European century, but European has been hugely suffered, for, suffered from these two great wars. So European has started to decline its monopoly domination and its superpower. So uh, finally the 20th century has become the American centuries. Uh, for instance, all these the liberalism and the democratization and uh, the uh, globalization all these the social and political uh, norm, norms has been mainly dominated by American uh, interference American do, uh, the influence so uh, we used to call these American hegemonies so 20th century has been become the American centuries uh, but these days uh, they uh, they has been appeared new narrative or new interpretation of political uh, the power transformation so uh, this is the uh, 21st century is the Asian centuries. So now we are entering a new century that is 21st century. So 21st century is a new century. This is a, a new interpretation or new uh, the narrative which has been uh, the 
commented by many uh, international political commentator or many international political analysis so actually this is not that much relevant it is not that much exactly fit for this new narrative because all these the mighty and powerful the uh, country like western uh, country european and uh, american has still exist as powerful and they are still as a rising powers uh, but I think that there are some important reason and some important elements to say uh, this new narrative that the 21st century is the Asian centuries. So now I'm going to give this reason and this, uh, the, uh, the background elements of the uh, saying that 21st century is American, uh, the Asian centuries. So uh, this is my, uh, on the other side, this is my real topic and my real theme, agent that I, I'm going to discuss here today. So... <clears throat> uh, the reason the why we are saying 21st century is Asian centuries uh, there are some important elements that the in terms of population size or in terms of the economic scale and a political the uh, the dominations Asian has Asian continent has been emerging as the rising power and emerging as the quite the uh, the yeah, rising powers in terms of its military capability or its economic strength, uh, for instance, in the in terms of economic scale, economic the uh, the GDPs that the uh, the first one is USA and the uh, the most the uh, the biggest scale of the economy is USA and second one is the China. China is from the Asia. The third one is the uh, Germans. Germans is also from Asia. The fourth one's Germany is from the Western country, but fifth one's India. So India is also from the Asia. So there is the three of the Asian country who has been mainly dominated by the world economy, the powers. This is one element. This is one reason why we are saying 21st century is the Asian centuries. The second one is they are the almost four country, four nuclear country in the Asians in terms of its military capability that the China, India, Pakistan, uh, North Korea, North Korea. Uh, These four countries has been emerging as nuclear countries, so they are showing the uh, the capability or in terms of this military of the powers. So this is second reason. Uh, The third reason is in in terms of is uh, the market based the. Domination or is market based the uh, the expanding is uh, the powers the uh, China and uh, the India is the largest population where uh, uh, we can uh, make lots of the uh, the money and we can make lots of the economic powers. So this is for the reasons. So all these uh, on the basis of all these reasons uh, we used to call this is 21st century the uh, the Asian centuries. So, uh, but uh, but I think that when we are discussing about Asian centuries, many people have an, uh, the wrong concept or the wrong interpretation of Asian Asianization, Asian centuries. Because uh, these days, whenever we are discussing about Asianization, we always uh, the thought to say that the China, China, China. We always feel that the Asian is about all about China. Actually, this is not about the not or not only about China. There are also lots of the Asian country who who has also been emerging as rising power like India and the Japan and South Korea and also Indonesia. So all this country has also emerging as very uh, the, uh, effective and very uh, powerful in terms of its the economic and military and its uh, the political structures. So, but one thing that we don't we don't miss is that China is the biggest part of Asian Asianization because in terms of its economic size and its military capabilities, these days China is emerging as the uh, quite powerful in terms of uh, its uh, the economic economic already China is the become second largest economy of the world, but in terms of uh, military, uh, the. I think before few respects, Pentagon has uh, the uh, showed one report about Chinese military capability, military expenditures. Uh, these days, uh, China has become second country who has spent uh, the largest amounts of the military expenditure. Uh, uh, yeah, China has become second second largest of the uh, military expenditure at uh, the next of Americas. So. Uh, Anyhow, this is how China has become the uh, the powerful in terms of economic and its military uh, the dominations. 
so but when we are discussing about and uh, when we are the thinking about the uh, superpower or leading nations uh, it has certain qualification and certain the criteria to be a superpower to or superpower or leading nations so in terms of these the criteria or all these qualification china cannot be a superpower because uh, though china is quite powerful in military and economics but china is uh, the totally and obviously fell in its uh, the political structures because china has hugely uh, the criticized and hugely uh, the condemned by uh, the many countries in terms of uh, its management of human rights and its management of the uh, uh, of the uh, the human rights violations so china cannot be a superpower leading nations but the, even China has uh, no uh, the uh, that kind of the uh, the how to say opportunity or that kind of the spares to become a, the uh, superpower leading nations. But I think China's the is the influence its domination is quite the uh, quite I think uh, the uh, quite the large because it has expanded its domination across many parts of the world like the South Asia and Southeast Asian country and also Middle East and also Africa. And and uh, the South Americas. So even these two we call the Africans become second China's because China has hugely uh, dominant is the uh, is uh, the uh, China is hugely expanding its domination and uh, is the influence in uh, every part of world. So what I what I'm gonna to say here is that the uh, in terms of uh, becoming superpower or leading nation, the India has the one of most suitable uh, the qualification or the criteria to be a leading nation to be a superpowers, because India is uh, this rich, uh, the emerging as uh, the fifth uh, largest economy and in terms of military, India's fourth largest military capability, so, uh, and also in in terms of this political structure, India is the largest democracy and one of the most pluralistic society. And also on the other side, India has the one of best secular country uh, in the world. So I think that the uh, now uh, currently one of most important the criteria of India to be a leading nation, to be a superpower, is India need to develop its economic uh, infrastructure and its economic uh, the. Yeah, it, 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 it's going to be area where India can uh, the show its stand and its capabilities. So if if it, India has become uh, the quite powerful in terms of its economic stand, then definitely India will be quite powerful in terms of its military uh, capability because there's strong linkage between the economic and military uh, capabilities. So that's why what I what I'm gonna to say here is currently the one of most important criteria or one of most important the uh, the objective that india need to accomplish and need to uh, success is economic development otherwise china may dominate in all southeast asian country or all in middle east countries so even in terms of in southeast asian regions uh, it, it is spare of indian domination because we used to call the indian continent so india need to expand its domination in across southeast is south asian country so that's india will, india will accept as a domination country in across wars because if india cannot accept as the do, uh, domination power it's, it's our region then how india can be domination across world so so what i'm gonna to say is india need to expand its economic development so that india will expand its military its political uh, domination across wars so uh, this is how I feel and how I uh, gonna to say here today about how India be uh, the superpower leading powers. If India cannot lead or cannot be a superpower in Asian region, then China is the next door of India. So if China lead the Asian nation or Asian country, then how uh, the world has been emerged and how world has been uh, shaped because China is the, uh, the dictatorship country and is a mainly dominated one party system so that's why it don't care about human rights and it don't care about the uh, the freedom of the speech and freedom of expression so that's why this is a huge uh, the how to say destruction and a huge depress for many uh, the, the depress for humanity so that's why it didn't have to bring this important the uh, the responsibility or the obligation to be a leading nation to be a superpower so uh, india can 
lead all Asian country or in travel into better way and a better uh, the uh, destination so uh, this is how I feel about the Asian Asian and how India need to bring and need to uh, take its responsibility to be a leading nation to be a superpowers so uh, thank uh, very much for uh, my viewers and uh, the before I'm going to end of my video I would like to request all my viewers to subscribe my video uh, the YouTube and like and share and I will come with more information and more knowledge about the politics or uh, many other fields so thank you very much